Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series and Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and in this episode I would like to send a Kerbal on the flyby of the moon but it seems really expensive. I've got to say, look at the rollout cost. It's now five times the sort of headline cost there uh, which is, uh, that's pretty substantial and it's obviously because it's a crewed mission but I swear, wait, or it could be a bug. Uh, if you were paying really close attention just now, I right clicked on the pod and the cost down here went down by a thousand and the cost up here went down by maybe seven thousand and the build time was reduced by seven days. Maybe I should right click on more parts. I'm just gonna go right clicking on parts. Could you reduce the cost for me a little bit more than that now? <laughs> I mean... I don't know what it's doing, really. Uh, it just randomly reduced the cost when I right-clicked on the pod. I've been right-clicking on the pod plenty of times so far because I had to change things like adding uh, food, water, and oxygen in. Uh, by default, it obviously doesn't have 14 days. Where if I've got 14 days of oxygen, 13 days and 10 hours of water, and 12 days and, well, it's called 13 days of food. And I think that should be good enough. Um, yeah, everything is pretty tight. I reduced the amount of HTP here. I've reduced the amount of ablator you can see because we're carrying additional uh, lunar rated heat shield now, which has its full ablator. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't remember part costs randomly changing when I right clicked on parts in, in Realism Overhaul before, but Whatever, anyway, um, we've got parachutes up here, batteries, uh, lots of batteries, because I actually reduced the amount of electric charge down here as well. We are carrying a bunch of solar panels. Let's see the spacecraft. Um, we've got these Ranger solar panels, um, six of them. That's a lot, and it costs a lot too, but we'll go with it for now. And uh, antenna you see here, and this is one of the balloon tanks that we sized for the RD-58, which we've had so much trouble with. But this is why I wanted to test it. I wanted to test it because we were going to use it here. And uh, we have another balloon tank here supplementing the existing tank for the LR-105 on the Titania rocket. And so that, that extends its burn time a bit. Since the larger, physically larger Titan tanks don't seem to give us more volume. And uh, yeah, we've got the two H1s on the core and four on the non boosters. Those are just side pods because of tooling. And yeah, that's our rocket to try and do a flyby of the moon. You can see the delta V reading here. The negative is, of course, because of the one kilonewton thruster at the top. And we'll be using a lot of this fuel for maneuvering and such. So, yeah, we need that. All right, so that's our rocket. And uh, you know what? Uh, for the sake of thrust to weight ratios and not killing our Kerbal, I'm going to shut down the outer four engines when it gets a little bit too serious. That way we won't get to 9 on the thrust to weight ratio. As far as a sample return mission, we should try that again as well. I'll queue one of those up. And I'll try not to make the same mistakes I made last time, but who knows. Okay, I've decided to go with the sample return mission first since it was much quicker to build. And everything looks fine. Ignition. <laughs> Oh god, I forgot to change that all about this. Sorry, sorry. But uh, an extra 0.2 tons needs to be added on here. Uh, it's just a Thor Delta Avionics core that needs to go on here. I forgot to add that. And of course, once you launch, what can you do? Okay, preparing for stage separation. And set. Quite a pause there. Okay, fairing separation. Right, now this time let's tune the antennae first. Activate. I swear, having all these little tanks on here definitely creates more lag. It's been that way the whole time. 
is way more lag than this rocket normally gets. Okay, I was a bit distracted, so the burden isn't quite as good as last time. We'll see how it shapes up. It's pretty close again. It's fine. Uh, just about right, in fact. All right. Uh, separation. RCS forward. Very good. All right, we have a spacecraft. I think I've been aiming for something more direct before. That's not necessarily more efficient. It's just better for timing given the the tightness of our landing stages because we really need to make orbit and land on this stage anyway. And ignition. All right, the RD-58 is lit. Okay, just about wrapping up here, and we'll use the RCS for the remainder, I think. Um, we still got a little bit left. Hopefully it's not that much extra Delta V, we'll see. If we need to go to the AJ-10, we can, of course. Okay, I think we're through the RCS. All right and separation and oh no uh it has a red reading here failed to ignite well there's no point carrying this along right now anyway i wonder if we can like dump the chute I mean, can we, like, deploy shoot? Yeah, I know it failed in space, but can we, like, eject it out anyway? <laughs> I mean, that would reduce some of the mass here. I guess not. I guess that's not an option. Well, it's an interesting landing location. I don't know if we'll keep communication very well there, but it looks okay. Alright, well, it has a suicide burn countdown, and this is the stage. You know, we don't have a, another stage to worry about. Alright. Suicide burn is a little bit early. Let's fire the upper thrusters. That fuel isn't going to be used otherwise. Oh no! Ah, crud. The signal delay. Well... Does this have any... It doesn't have... Wait, it does have control. Oh, we'll go with this then. <laughs> Who cares about the other part? This will work. Ah, it's too early for this one to do a suicide burn. We have barely enough electric charge. We can do analyze telemetry at the surface. All I want to do is fulfill the lunar landing contract. So, it's fine. We're good. No problems. This is even better. But the electric charge we have to watch out for, but I don't think it's gonna take too long to get down. Communication is sort of interesting. How are we communicating? I think we're just relaying through our other missions, so... Uh, we're gonna lose communication as soon as that crashes into the surface, aren't we? Ah. That would be a problem. Okay, so we're not quite... We're not in quite as good a situation as I would like. Well, we have lost connection. Eh, this has obviously not gone well either. So maybe I would have even been too late. It's a tough burn to judge. Okay, though I probably would have pitched up more in that case, but uh, yeah, all right. Well, back to Space Center. We just unlocked some new staged combustion engines, and I decided to check out whether we could replace the LR-105 with the NK-9V. Also, we did unlock uh, our initial cryogenic engines, Hydrolox engines, and so we do have the RL-10, but the RL-10, the entry cost is 160000 
And you know, it's not a cheap engine anyway, but that 160,000 is pretty darn expensive. Granted, it would have had quite a lot of development cost, but I don't think I'm willing to spend on that until we pick up the the crude flyby around the moon thing. But more curious is the fact that the NK9V has no entry cost. I I suspect that probably these engines did involve some research. We don't have any precursor engine to them. They're not simply higher developed RD58s or anything like that. They're much, much higher thrust. Uh, so I don't know why we have no entry cost on here, but it's, it's RP1 compatible. Otherwise it wouldn't be here. It's uh, properly marked as if it is RP1 compatible. So um, fine. If they're not going to charge me, they're not going to charge me. Who am I to complain? I'll unlock this one too. Sure. Uh, but uh, it's probably good uh, to get some uh, data points on this engine with the sample return rocket. Uh, basically, the sample return rocket has always been sort of a test bed for our new engines, like the RD-58. Uh, we always seem to have an engine problem with it. Okay, so putting the NK9V in, it looks like it gives us 4,479 there. And the 3 minutes and 31 second burn time is under its 4 minutes. We could probably have it burn for longer. And But these are the balloon tanks, so we can't resize them any more than they are right now. And I don't want to put the side ones on again. Those were cumbersome. Yep, this is pretty good. Uh, Cost-wise, let's see, 500 for one of these compared to LR105, where are you, uh, 275, so it's much more expensive. So we'll give this a uh, try out, so basically it'll be an engine test situation. It's a pretty expensive rocket to do that with, but it's better than a crude rocket. Okay, so the Valiant spacecraft has been built, and so I'm going to pick up the lunar flyby contract, and all the risk it entails. There is a liability here, let's remember. We can't just go ahead and spend that advance immediately. I know some people do, but I'm not that type. Uh, yep, I'm a bit more conservative about that sort of thing. So we've got it built, but it's rolling. It's got to roll out first, and that's got to take six days and ten hours. So we're going to have to pay attention to the entry of Mars 1B into Mars SOI and hopefully that'll fulfill a contract for us that uh, Mars flyby contract we'll see so let's go check that out okay we have entered Mars SOI and let me see what we've got here we just need to fly by Mars within 20,000 kilometers we are currently within 20,000 kilometers and we've got a signal delay of about 20 minutes uh, electric charge seems fine uh, when, when we time warp we will be properly recharging as we can see I could get closer to Mars um, let me just give it a little puff and see if we've got the right okay this is the wrong orientation well we're gonna have to turn around first close over Mars would be nice but you know, it's costing too much, and I want to make sure we can maintain our solar orientation. And no luck on the action groups. Okay, well, mass spectrometry is just recovery only. Even visible imaging has been done before. Well, it seems to be just a bunch of lowlands, midlands, and Olympus mons so far. Nothing particularly new. Well, we'll definitely have to return some sort of null science if we can't get anything new. So 20 minutes before periapsis, I'll make sure to send something. Well, uh, I'm going to send something back. Let me send orbital perturbation data. That seems reasonable. Just transmit that. And telemetry. Y'all can always transmit telemetry. Oh, we were actually, I thought Mars would block us, but we're actually slipping down below, so we're not going to lose communication at all. 
Let's just wait until we're 20 minutes from periapsis then. I don't think it's going to be low over at that point. There's way too many Midlands. Ah, it's going to be Midlands again. Oh, wait, Olympus Mons, but same difference. Okay, Mars flyby is complete though. We completed the contract. Okay, so we're done with this. This probe will just continue on its way. And I need to take care of a crewed mission around the moon. Okay, the sun is setting as Philby Kerman prepares to launch for the moon. And let's double check our supply. Well, we can't like that, but it looks good. It looks good. And yeah, thanks to the little one kilonewton thruster at the top, we can always abort and come back. So that's good. Uh, throttle up, SAS is on. And I see no reason not to go. Ignition. Some delay again. Ah, oh, we've lost one engine. Uh, I'm gonna. Well, I'm, we're gonna have to shut down and roll back. I'm afraid. <laughs> we. I thought. I thought we didn't have engine failures on ignition anymore. Huh. What, what is this test flight? Engine shutdown. Well, I'll be. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna have to roll back on this one. You know, uh, for space shuttle missions, they actually fix the engines on the pad and could replace the engines on the pad. That would be much better, considering the cost of rolling this out and rolling this back. I don't know how much it costs to roll it back, but rolling it out costs so much, and I don't think they're gonna give us that money back, are they? <sighs> I mean, see, it re refunds us the part cost. I guess, but we're gonna have to roll it out again. Oh, and Philby's out of commission until April 5th. Now, is that engine gonna work when I roll it out again? I mean, well, it's nine days to just roll it back even. I don't understand that, but... Yeah, I mean, and they're going to charge me 50000 extra to roll it out again. Um, let's just take a look at it. I don't like this. I turned off the pad engine failure specifically because it caused weird problems when rolling it out again. Because it didn't seem to work properly. Or uh, I think the engines were still running or something like that. It was weird. Oh, great, it's in the ground for some reason. That's not how I had it. And apparently not editing it will take one day and 18 hours. Well, I just moved it up. I guess maybe that's it. Okay, one ignition. Well, they need their T-tab back. Technically, it could have gone with just one engine on the core. And I think it was the core engine that failed... It's got enough thrust to weight ratio for that. Well, Venus 1 will be arriving soon, but I think we can launch this at least. Or try to. But then again, maybe we should take care of these two first and then and then launch it. I think it'll be better that way so I can focus on it. Okay, we've just entered Venus SOI and we are on a crash course. I wonder... Okay, just holding this direction will be fine. Let's boost up. Um, what is the atmosphere of Venus at? 145 kilometers. We could like make a light pass and see if we can get into orbit or something, but that's... You know... You know what? Let's, let's go for 140 kilometers and see what happens. If we could get some science like that, timing it will be tricky, but it's only a six minute delay. But before we make that decision, let's see where our lines of communication are heading. Uh, okay, Earth is there. Funny, it's not showing me the line. Periapsis is here. It'll be, I think, well, we could program in the, the command first. We'll try it. I mean, 
with the Mars mission, we went so far away that we couldn't get low over. This time, it'll be a nice little luxury to get close. Okay, yes, uh, the action group works. So uh, let's transmit a temperature scan. And orbital perturbation experiment. So now we have a fair amount of extra science, and hopefully we'll get more. We'll wait for another, another biome. Oh, the other Venus one is coming in. Um, let's take a look at that and see what kind of altitude it's coming in at. But I think we're just going to focus on this one. Wow, it's really got a negative periapsis. All right, well, let's lift that up. It's a rate check mark transmits scientific data, though. I'll just transmit this one just in case. Okay, but I'm going back to the other one because it was first. Still high over, but I'm gonna do the periodic queue up of science. Just above. Well, now we definitely need to queue up more science. Some of it should have been done. Why hasn't it been done? Did it keep... Hey, I have pressed one quite a lot of times now. It didn't catch them. Darn it. We might have to send the other one in. Well, now we have no connection. I definitely want atmospheric science, darn it. And certainly low over. Yeah, I kept pressing 1 to get the science, but it didn't catch it. I did take myself out of time warp. I'm very displeased. Oh, well, I can't... And it, it lost the info. What? Why did the science all close? Come on. Review stored data. Really? You gotta take time for this? You had it open anyway. Okay. Let's go to the other Venus one and see what we can do with it. Oh, it's taking, it's not taking my action groups right now. Why? Oh, it, it doesn't do it in map view. It doesn't accept the key presses for action groups in map view. I didn't realize that. Huh. Well, live and learn, I suppose. suppose. And uh, go back out to here. So my mistake. I was supposed to do it out there. Okay. Maybe we can get atmosphere. I don't know. Depends how long we're passing through the atmosphere, I suppose. Wow. We, we still have communication now? That's surprising. Well, um, we, we still have communication, so I can... Oh, shoot, I forgot to... Um, let's queue up more. And that bunch should be in the atmosphere, maybe. Maybe. We've gotten plenty of science out of this. It's just that juicy atmosphere science that I want. Uh, yeah, well, 2 minutes and 30 seconds might be too late. We'll see. Oh, really close. Oh, 45 seconds too late. Well, shucks. And transmit that. Well, now we have 600 science. We should probably spend that lot. But first, let's finally try and get our Kerbal over to the moon. Hmm? Well, uh, looks like Philby is ready again. Let's try it. I don't know how many engines are going to be lit here, whether it's going to be all right. We aren't lined up with the moon, really. We might have to just call it a test if they light automatically and don't wait for me. Uh, oh, they did. Okay, uh, engine one, please. Activate. Off lane transfer it is. This is why I turned off the 
launch pad failures because it automatically ignites. But did it listen to me? No. Okay, quickly, we need to target the moon so I know about our inclination. Come on, when I say quickly. Okay, we're in very, really, really bad inclination. <laughs> try and fix some of it. The problem is if you do a off-plane transfer you can't really do a free return trajectory if it's a really harsh off-plane transfer. Also there's the whole matter of getting there quickly so I really want to resolve the inclination issue right now. Okay well I wanted to shut down some engines to limit g-forces so we are doing that. We might push these H1s over the limit, but they very pissed me off today, so they deserve it. Okay, yeah, they lasted. And set. Okay, the LR-105 is lit. The whole orbital situation is a bit tight. Okay, looks like I was going a bit too shallow. And we'll probably need an outright ignition of the RD-58. Okay, separation. RCS. And says very stable. Ignition. Now remember, as far as delta V is concerned, what's showing at the bottom as the total is subtracting what the one kilonewton thruster can do. So we've got we've got enough to transfer. The question is, do we have enough to do a free return transfer of some kind? That's trickier. Okay, so I've plotted it out with a mid-course adjustment. The initial burn is 3,110 meters per second. Then we have 561 meters per second there. And then around the moon, we have a maneuver of 252 to dip ourselves back into the atmosphere. So it's not perfect pre-return, but we'll see how it all shapes up. Phil V may be in grave danger right now. We will see. I mean, not right now. Not now he could come back right away, but it's because of my plans that he's in grave danger. One of the caveats is because the solar panels are on here, we can't ditch this trunk early. So if we use the one kilonewton thruster for maneuvers, it has to push everything. It's possible that we'll just call this. We we won't go into lunar SOI, and we'll keep we'll make sure that we can deorbit properly. I think we'll just have to try again, even though, I mean, it's frustrating, but we'll just have to try again with the system and hope that the engines work out and we go into the right inclination instead of what happened this time. I should get a refund, shouldn't I? I feel like I should get a refund. Okay, we can do the rest with the RCS. I suppose Philby should do a EVA report out here. Let's do a crew report first. Uh, transmit. Okay, um, quick EVA report. Come on. I want to see Philby. All right, EVA report. Keep board. And ignition. Okay, well, that's the best that can do. And what does that get us? Well, it sort of gets us a bearing counter with the moon. And we'll have a bit of an apoapsis issue, but not too severe. I think we'll take that bearing counter, do that science high over the moon, and uh, aim to come back. So in Lunar SOI, let's see if we can make a maneuver. It's close to our apoapsis make a maneuver to adjust our earth periapsis. Well, more or less that'll do the trick. So it's a uh, 85 meter per second burn right there. So let's at least go into lunar SOI. 
Well, lots of science will have been done in this episode, and we certainly have sent a Kerbal out further than a Kerbal has ever gone before. Okay, Lunar SOI. Really, really high over the moon, but it, it's a good start. Crew report. Transmit. EVA. Okay. Board. 54 for the EVA report here. All right. Let's free up the one kilonewton thruster now. Uh, we actually need to be turned backwards, don't we? Oh, I, I don't. I need to shut this down too. Okay. Yeah. Um. I wish there was an opposite of node in indicator, but in this case, that'll just be retrograde. 60 kilometers seems okay. I don't really mind if we uh, go around. We've got plenty of electric charge for that. Okay, 60 kilometers. Let's hope that that's good. Okay, we're coming home. Uh, maybe a little bit closer before we ditch the trunk. Call it trunk. Service module. Or transfer stage. Whatever you want to call it. It's a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, normal. A separation. Alright. Surface negative. We will have to use descent mode this time. Oh, we seem to be over some islands and it's daylight. Um, looks like Indonesia. And activating descent mode. We'll take off the pitch and yaw in a little bit once the atmosphere has a good grip on us. Okay, I'm disabling pitch control. That's a pretty severe pitch, though, that this descent mode wants. Once I hit periapsis, I'll roll it around. I mean, maybe I should just roll it around now, because it's... Let's see. We are controlling our descent. A blader seems to be holding up fine. Of course, we've got two different sets of ablator, but both seem to be all right. It looks like this is working out pretty well. I mean, it's literally just holding at this altitude, <laughs> burning off all the all the speed. Now it's going down again. Okay, uh, at this point, we are definitely coming down on this orbit, so I'm gonna roll it back around. to avoid high g-forces. Okay, things are calming down. Uh, the 4.7 g's endured probably was during launch before I shut down the outer four H1 engines. I don't think we got past 3 g's here. Okay, we have another peak of g-forces, but still around 3 g's here. And we're in the Pacific. Good spot to slash down. Recovery forces from Australia will be on their way. Okay, for a sec there I was worried about the parachutes, but the parachutes are out. It took maybe a second longer than they should have to pop out. And we're down to a mere 4.5 meters per second. Even though we still have plenty of fuel and we're keeping this heat shield and everything. Okay, and as soon as possible recover vessel. I think I might have to put a separate trunk with the solar panels so that we can stage off the RD-58. That might be a better idea. 
then the one kill newton thruster will have much more delta v to work with not enough to make orbit and break orbit around the moon though so is it really worthwhile i don't know okay well signs earn for return from flyby of the moon at least somebody appreciates our flyby around here phil v got some extra experience and uh, taking some much needed rest though only a week actually on on the pad abort with the engine shut down um i think he took two weeks <laughs> so it's like completely random but anyway we haven't fulfilled the contract yet so that's important we did fulfill the mars flyby and venus flyby so we seem to be rolling in it and if we take this out of it we still have three million so we do have the lunar landing to do as well. That deadline's coming up. We should really make sure that we get that done, even without the sample return component, but hopefully with it. But yeah, so next time we have to spend a whole lot of science, 700, maybe buy some more upgrade points with our money, and then basically do what we did this time again, the sample return attempt and the crew flyby attempt, though hopefully a little bit better. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.